we're going to begin with Chun talking about uh, hydrodynamics and music. Take it away, Chun. Okay, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to um, talk to you guys uh, online. Um, so just before my talk, I will just uh, notify you that uh, the slides are online in the in the timetable. I also post the link on the Slack channel so you can see it. So now let's begin my talk. Um, so, so today I will mostly talk about uh, um, uh, introduction, give you a brief introductions about uh, how to selectively model the quaternion plasma and uh, how to use, uh, we'll see that we'll use hydrodynamics as a tool to do that. So before we uh, talk about physics, uh, so today um, you need to post your questions on a different Slack channel. Uh, in, it should be Bok Shen. Um, so if you haven't joined this channel, please join it right now and post your questions around the talk or during the hands-on sessions in this channel. And uh, there will be TAs and they'll help you out. And also we will um, we'll do the, the, the Okay, this is a so raised hand. Uh, was there a question? Pardon? Somebody raised the hand? Somebody raised hands, yeah. yeah. Okay. Puja, okay, did you have a question? Move Let's move on, I guess. Okay. So uh, let me, so over the past two decades in our field, we have gradually come into a standard picture about uh, the dynamics of uh, relative heavy ion collisions. And it can be mainly break down into several multi stages as shown in this figure. So at the very beginning of the collisions, we'll have two nuclear accelerated to near speed of light. They are highly Lorentz contracted as uh, look like two pancakes showing on the left uh, part of the figure. And uh, once they collide, they will evolve from a far out of equilibrium uh, stage to uh, near equilibrium about uh, one Fermi in the first, uh, uh, in the first Fermi over C. And then the system becomes uh, near some equilibrium and the dynamics of its system can be actually described by uh, microscopic hydrodynamics as the system expands and cools, they will smoothly go through the quaternion plasma phase to hydrogen gas phase. And eventually when the density of the system becomes so low that particles stop interacting with each other, and then we call that kinetic freeze out. And then, um, oh, sorry. Uh, we call that kinetic freeze out and then the particles stop interacting with the other and then fly to the detectors. So the whole interesting dynamics happen about uh, on the scale of 10 Fermi over C, which is really fast. And then, and then the modern detectors will detect the, the aftermath of this, uh, of these um, collisions at uh, say nanosecond scales. And then, then our work as a theorist is trying to use a theoretical framework to, to reverse engineer what is actually uh, detected from the detectors. Uh, and, and then going back to the early times that understand that the dynamics happens in this uh, first 10 Fermi over C where the QGP exists and it's how it's evolved and, and it's a response to geometries. So, so there's a lot of collective phenomena in the world that is very interesting and they emerge from fundamental interactions between individual particles. So if you look at a Microsoft uh, daily life, you will find that uh, if you look at uh, uh, a lot of bird on the sky, they will actually fly in uh, certain interesting patterns. And also that also apply in, if you look at a school of fish, that they, if, as they, they evolve, uh, as they uh, like swim in the sea, they actually will also form patterns. Even if you look at a bicycle race, that if you have too many people stuck with each other, they form some collective patterns in there. So sure. the way I'm interested in is, Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's a there's a comment in the chat that says, uh, "Could you speak louder?" I think it may just be a uh, question of your microphone's input. Okay. Uh, so okay. So anyway, I will speak louder. Uh, is that okay? Or should I speak even louder? 
uh, I don't know how to actually increase the voice in the microphone, but I'll just speak louder. Um, so what we are interested in is to actually understand the collective behavior in the microscopic uh, system, which is governed by strong interactions. So, so in reality, this heavy ion collision is a many body system, which it's uh, uh, dynamics is governed by quantum chromodynamics in terms of QCDs. So here is uh, animations that are showing the evolution of heavy ion collisions through the dynamical simulations. As you can see, after the two nuclei pass through each other, there are the thousands of particles produced in the heavy ion collisions, which interact with each other. So from these animations, you can imagine that they, they actually have lots of particles and they actually collide with each other. So we are interested in the collective uh, patterns of how these uh, particles uh, react as a whole many body systems in, in, the, in the strong interaction context. So relative heavy ion collisions not only help us to understand the collective phenomena, it also help us to understand the property of the new QCD in terms of its phase diagrams. So, so there's a, so on the right hand side, I plot um, the, the current, our current knowledge about the QCD phase diagram in terms of temperature and baryon chemical potentials. At the zero baryon chemical potentials, you will have a smooth crossover uh, calculated by lattice QCD, and then um, and the, and you will have uh, you will have heavy ion collisions at different collision energies indicated as these uh, colored blobs actually can cover certain regions of the heavy ion collisions. At the high energies or early universe, we are very close to nu v equals zero phase. We are mostly probing the high temperature uh, phase uh, part of the phase diagrams above the transition temperature around 155 mV. So we are, we are, would like to understand how QGP uh, Coulomb plasma behaves at uh, above the chiral critical chiral phase transition temperature. If you collide the heavy ion collision at a relatively lower energy, say 19 GeV or even 5 GeV, which is the goal for the current RICB energy scan program, as well as the future RICA, uh, uh, NICA and the FAIR experiments, you're actually looking at heavy ion collisions at the finite baryon chemical potentials where uh, the finite baryon densities actually play a role. And we are looking at the phase, uh, phase structures of the QCDs in a finite baryon chemical potential regions. Whether there will be a critical point uh, in somewhere in this phase diagram is the one of the major goal in the relative heavy ion collision experiment the program to actually pin down where there will be a critical point and where is the first phase or the first order phase transition lines in these phase diagrams. And also last but not least, there's also a connection to the latest uh, observations of the neutron star and black hole mergers, which also probe the property of the nuclear matter in the extreme cases. In, there, in that case, you're actually looking at the very large mu B and the low temperature phase. So, so you can see that there, there will be a connections between heavy ion collision program and all these uh, uh, measurements from the sky so that uh, if we go to really large mu B, actually, we can actually have a crosstalk with the field there in nuclear astrophysics. So, so with, 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 with heavy ion collisions, we would like to understand in physics goal is to actually to quantify the hot, the properties of the hot QCD matters from the heavy ion data. So on the left-hand side, I list a few interesting uh, things that we, look, we want to understand for QGPs. For example, it's thermodynamic relations uh, in terms of equation of state. For example, the relation between energy density, pressure, and entropy density, as well as speed of sound uh, for, for this uh, coagulant plasma in the high temperature phase. And we also like, want to understand the transport properties, such as shear and bulk viscosity, which tells you how energy and momentum dissipate inside um, the fluid. Uh, same thing uh, apply for the conserved charge. So you can also have diffusion constant for the conserved charge like net baryons, net electric charge, and net strangeness. Um, so, so, so in addition to those, we can also have uh, transport coefficients uh, uh, describing how the energy moment exchange between external probes uh, versus the medium, which is characterized by Q hat, E hat, and Q hat. As well as, uh, in last, last but not least, we have uh, also, um, because the, 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 the QCD matter is hot, it also radiates uh, electromagnetic radiation. We also want to see how 
with the light coming out from these uh, hot QCD matters. So on the right-hand side, I actually list a few observables that uh, we have think about that has direct, direct link with these uh, thermodynamic and the transport properties of the foie plasma. For example, if you want to understand the thermodynamic uh, uh, property of QGPs, the most sensitive observables in experiments are measurement of particle spectra, collective flow, and, uh, and the phantoscopy, uh, like HBT correlations. And then we found that uh, in the in the in the in the research, we found that anisotropic flow is most sensitive observables that can help us to constrain sheer bulk viscosity, and this will be our goal for this uh, for this talk. And you will find that, uh, and and then later on in Friday, you will talk. Uh, we will talk about uh, the jet and heavy bulk uh, observables uh, by Guico, which will link to to the to the energy loss transport coefficients. So in our field, this equation of state, the thermodynamic relation is actually uh, well defined by, provided by that first principle calculation from lattice QCD to actually help us to uh, reduce the, the theoretical uncertainties by providing uh, a good control on the relation between energy density and pressure at the nu d equals zero. And today we're mostly interested in uh, talk about the, 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 the transport property of the QGP, how to study them through a phenological approach to understand the temperature dependence uh, of the shear and bulk viscosity using uh, anisotropic flow coefficients.